Brooks movies growing up with Broke Suki. Superman before Zack Snyder ruined him. Michael Keaton was the best Batman while Christian Bale was just a dead man. No one remembers the other ones. Princess Leia in bikinis and transformer Lamborghinis. Please don't let child of the roof ever act again. Please God, no. Remembering tales from the crypt back when Michael Bay wrote good scripts. He wrote good All right here. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 333. I'm Jason. I'm uh, Jeff. I'm Jim. I'm the intern. Blake is joining us in a little bit, uh, but thank you for joining us. I'm trying to get Neil from Dark Angels on the show. I'm going to guilt him into it. Um, I will say the power of Skype is really nice because you can just call people at random and see if they show up. So... <laughs> The power of Skype compels you. <laughs> Name, title for the show. Uh, yeah, so this week, uh, it's Cinco de Mayo. Is that correct? I don't even know. I feel like we're in a loop. A time loop. Yeah. Is it Cinco de Mayo? Yeah. Nope, it is not. Oh, but I had my hat ready to go. See? I'm all back. I got my yeah. hat. No? Okay. Can't do that anymore. No. Oh. Yeah. Damn it. I don't know if I really should have done that to begin with, Brian, to be honest. <laughs> you shouldn't have. No, no. <laughs> uh, so thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, you can watch us on YouTube at the History of Bad Ideas podcast, uh, which is uh, we appreciate everybody watching us. I don't know why, but it's nice. And uh, <laughs> uh, this week I have a Tiger King background, uh, Joe Exotic with his tiger. So I, I was pretty happy with it. I, w- I was going different. Jeff, I feel like you're in a time warp over there with your blurred background on Skype. Oh, is it blurred? Yes, you're blurred. Oh, well, Either I don't that know or... how to change shit like that. <laughs> Either that. Don't worry about it. If I you click on it, great. what will it do? Yeah, you look great. Your background just looks blurred. Yes, I you know. look fine. I feel like... Well, Chris... I see... If I click unblur my background, will it make other changes to things, or will it just unblur? Just unblur. Boop. There you go. Now, uh, nope. I feel. Oh, like... I'm about to say, and all of a sudden, I see Brian's other things. Tablecloth. Um, yes. It is a smooth thing. Uh, did you flip your uh, camera. Is that what you did? Yeah. Ah! There we go. <laughs> Jeff, Just the, when I thought I had this Skype thing figured out. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, with your blurred background, I was waiting for Chris Hansen to walk in. Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. <laughs> I was a little worried yeah, over uh, there. Chris Hansen's not allowed in my place. Chris Hansen is not allowed in a lot of places. Uh, so how's everybody doing this week? Week 1800 of quarantine? I really enjoyed the meme Jeff shared today of the candles for 2020 that came out oh. uh, uh, it was a little mini dumpster with a candle <laughs> in it that's on fire <laughs> can we buy those it, it, as far as i know it wasn't a real product but sure why not <laughs> do you think michael scott's jane could do it she could make those <laughs> this is my candle room the serenity oh. by jan <laughs> that's right uh, is that what it was? Speak of serenity. Breath of silence. That's what it was. Breath of silence. Jerry Stiller. Yes. <sighs> Why couldn't you have taken Ben? Jerry was fine. Why couldn't you take Ben Stiller? <laughs> <God>. Wow. 
<laughs> Jerry Stiller had good years of comedy left. Ben had none left. Come on. I don't need another Zoolander. But maybe the Ben Stiller show again, season two. That might have worked. So, um, Brian, were you hit hard since uh, he was on King of Queens? Yeah. Yeah. He's on, I mean, he was a major character on two of my favorite sitcoms, Seinfeld and King of Queens. So, But yet he wasn't on Kevin Can Wait. Do you feel like Kevin James was just being an asshole and not asking him back? I feel like that could have been it. I think he probably just didn't have a role for him. Uh huh. I think if it would have went on to a third season, they would have brought him back or brought him on. <laughs> yeah. It's well, like they, they first season out. you get Kevin James, second season you get Leah Remini. So the third season would have had to have been Jerry Stiller, but playing <laughs> Leah Remini's dad <laughs> living in their basement. Season six was Patton Oswalt. Uh, so it would have just come full circle. You know, Jeff, though, they probably wouldn't have done a season three just because they ran out of, de- out of ideas after season one. That's why they killed the wife off, remember? Oh, that's true, yeah. We, we, we well, yeah, and the, they ran out of more ideas, so they have to bring in uh, the father of... They were, they were trying to get saved and renewed for a second season, so they were like, oh, we'll bring her back because them together equals ratings. I, I just like that you're like, well, we kind of ran out of ideas and it was played out with the husband and wife thing. And I'm thinking, are you Marvel comic writers with Spider-Man? <laughs> we got to break it. We got to save Aunt May and break up Mary Jane and Peter Parker. Nobody knows how to we write just, for a married couple. Yeah, we just ran out of uh, ideas for Kevin James being married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just so unrealistic, man. <laughs> Did, and is there, unless it's a mayor to another dude <laughs> there is only, only pretend though oh yeah only pretend just for health just for health insurance uh, it's still legal so it's not pretend was it legal? Uh, and i'm all in on that uh, ke- uh the new uh kevin james movie where he's the bad guy yeah Absolutely. explain this jim explain what what this is uh, I forget the name of the movie, but he plays a uh, kidnap. He plays somebody, uh, a white supremacist with a nice uh, swastika, what uh, either tattooed or cut into the back of his head with the hair, <laughs> and uh, he's looking for some type of uh, treasure, I guess. <laughs> and uh, he goes to the house where the people think it is, and the little girl has the key and she runs off and then she apparently kicks everybody's ass go 10 year old girl <laughs> the the movie is called becky becky yes so that's so I just guess it's, it's about a girl named becky and, and that's just from the trailer there jim that's just from the trailer <laughs> it sounded like you told the plot of an entire movie so, well it is kevin james uh is it national it's a good trailer <laughs> Is it National Treasure 3 colon white supremacist? Is that what it is? <laughs> Coming to so Disney. The, I, I think it's American History 11. Oh, they already okay. had American History. <laughs> so the plot for that movie is a teenager's weekend at a lake house with her father takes a turn for the worse when a group of convicts wreak havoc on their lives. Oh. So it's got uh, Joel McHale, Kevin James... Joel Joel McHale's cool. That's enough right there. Lulu Wilson. Oh, I love Lulu. Becky. And Um, a bunch of people I've never heard of. Jim, the the 10-year-old girl less annoying than Theo from A Million Little Things. Everybody is less (laughs) annoying than Theo. Fuck that kid. God, that fucking kid. No, no, I'm not going to fuck that kid because then Chris Hansen will no, 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 no. show up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Chris Hansen. Jim, are you past season three or episode three yet of Million Little Things? Season two, four. Uh, no, I haven't. I didn't watch anything since last since last week of Million Little Things. Oh, damn it. We do have we do have another breath of breath of silence. You you skipped considering your background has tigers in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Roy. Roy. Horn. Stick breed and Roy. Yes. Yes. 
I was getting ready to say that, but I was letting Jason talk about whatever crap Jason was talking about. And uh, one from last week that uh, I forgot to mention was uh, Sam Lloyd. He was Ted yeah. on Scrubs. Uh-huh. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was last week. Uh-oh. And and well, since we're going to uh, Little Richard, Little Richard, yep. best role for Little Richard, Mystery Alaska, Mystery Alaska. Yep. Could you make the song longer? <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts singing the Canadian national yes. anthem. <laughs> oh, Canada! <laughs> and Mike Myers' best role too. You know where you can get rubbing a tug around here. <laughs> um. Let's see. Uh, uh, just for you, Brian, I did watch Rambo colon Last Blood uh, this week. I watched a lot of movies this week. Um, <laughs> I'm so, it just sounds so wrong when you say the word colon, say so like colon Last Blood. <laughs> Does not sound good. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a movie, uh, that happened to be a movie about hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be plot lines next week. Uh, it, yeah, it was uh, it was enjoyable. I, I really it was 10 o'clock at night. I had nothing going on. All the kids were in bed. The wife was out. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to think more. Watch something. It was on Amazon Prime. And uh, yeah, it's free on Amazon right now. And I was going to watch Creed 2 because I've yet to see that. But I was like, hmm. I need something lighthearted. Not lighthearted. I shouldn't say that. Uh, it's about trafficking, uh, women trafficking. <laughs> but I needed something I didn't have to think about. And uh, yeah. Rambo was, uh, it was a little bit more intense than Taken. It was an intense version. Um, and there was a couple surprises in it. And he cuts a man's heart out. I mean, what else more can you yeah. want? So. He cuts Spoiler! A heart out with a spoon? No, with a That doesn't hurt more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, uh... I feel like it could have been like a little bit longer Mm -hmm. just from the standpoint of like everything happens really fast. Yeah. Like from like, like there's not much of a, of the story gets told or it's just kind of like, boom, he's in the shit like right away. So yeah. When they came to, um, from the moment that he was going to Mexico to find his niece and like from when, and then they attacked his uh, house, his ranch. Really? Yeah. It was like five minutes and like, done. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Like I was expecting, and they they spend a lot of their time in the tunnels underneath his farmhouse. Right. house. And I was like, I was expecting a lot more up above. Um, yeah. But I enjoyed. It. I mean, I, I thought it was better than Rocky Four. I hated Rocky Four. I was not a fan of that one. Or not Rocky Four. Sorry, <laughs> Rainbow <laughs> Four. Rainbow I'm like, Four. Really? You saw the light? You finally no, saw no, the no, light? No. Oh, uh, uh, just uh, R- just Rambo. The, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, see, that's that's one of my favorites. Really? I, yeah, I loved it. Well, I'm, compared to Rambo three and Rambo First Blood Part two, Rambo I, three is by far the worst of the of the five. I may need to watch Rambo three again. I maybe that's it because uh, I don't think I I think I've seen that maybe twice in my whole life. I like Rambo First Blood Part two. Totally different than you know First Blood, but yeah. um. I, I like I said I enjoyed it. So I also watched Sonic the Hedgehog with the kids this weekend. Um, not bad. It was enjoyable. Brad from Cinema Guys was right. It was not a bad film. It was actually kind of fun. So that was, so you uh, watched Jim Carrey Sonic the Hedgehog, not Sonic the Sonic the Hedgehog, right? Not well. I watched that later, Jim. <laughs> Wife was out. Let's watch <laughs> Sonic Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, no, uh, I watched. Uh, bloodshot how was that um it wasn't as bad as everything i've read about it Mm -hmm. uh but it wasn't good so lowered expectations yeah did you you feel like i mean you shouldn't have spent the 20 dollars, or was it okay to spend the 20 dollars at home uh well i didn't spend it's not $20 Twenty dollars anymore. It's oh. uh, it's only five ninety nine now. Oh, okay. Then that's not bad. That's so, not bad. Is that the uh, second run theater snail Jay? <laughs> At least on uh, Redbox. <laughs> on Redbox on demand, it's only five ninety nine. No, that's not bad. I don't have an issue. Uh, Sonic no. the Sonic the Hedgehog was five ninety nine. Uh, Jim, or Jeff, you were asking how Jim Carrey was in it. Um, he was very Jim Carrey. Um, I liked it. I mean, he played a, good, a decent enough role. Nothing great, but 
Well, I mean, it's supposed to be over the top. Yeah. So that's why you get Jim Carrey. But here's the thing. Um, Brad, I actually texted Brad uh, on it because he was a fan of the show. Uh, we both agreed. I actually am looking forward to the sequel more than uh, I think the sequel could actually be better. Uh, Jim Carrey turns into the main Dr. Rob- Robot Nick or Robotic Nick. Robotic. Yeah. You like the more look of him. And spoilers, Tails shows up at the end. So I'm like, okay. Well, Sorry. Ruin it bad. for me now. My Is do- Knuckles there? No, knuckles? no Knuckles. No Knuckles. So Knuckles will be there for the third movie. Then. Knuckles was oddly, Knuckles Deep was in uh, uh, Sonic the Vagabond or whatever it is. Bad dog. I like, I like Sonic the Vagabond. <laughs> Homeless porn. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, we did finish uh, Orange is the New Black, the wife and I, finally. Um, it was enjoyable. It was, it was a nice, it was a nice wrap up. Um, yeah. But I liked it enough. But uh, Jeff, did you see anything? Uh, nothing worth talking about. Just reruns of stuff. Okay. Jim, anything? Uh, I watched, I actually watched and actually stayed awake for Murder on the Orient Express. The new one? And it, it, the one that was released a few years ago. Mm-hmm. It, it was adequate. I mean, good cast, and it just... It, uh, I, I watched uh, both that one, and then, like, the next day I watched the the one from the 70s or whatever, and yeah. I actually think the earlier one was better. I, I, could, I could see that. I thought the newer uh, and then one. I watched. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought the newer one was oh, go good, but it was missing something. I don't know what it was missing, but it was definitely missing something. It felt something was edited out, like yeah, uh, like a storyline, or you know, I, th- I think they cut out some of the suspects or lessened their involvement. Their their involvement. I, I, I fell asleep like three different times during it. So a murder. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 the first couple times I tried to watch it, I fell asleep. So I actually watched it yesterday and I'm like, well, I might as well stay awake. I'm not doing anything else. And it's on. So <laughs> I think I like knives out better. Um, oh yeah. Oh, I definitely, I definitely like knives out better. Knives out better. Uh, I, I was not in love with knives out as much as everyone else on the show, but uh, I, I think I like it. I, I think I need to watch it again. But I definitely enjoyed it, I think, better than Murder on the Orient Express. Um, and then Clue is above all of them. Clue is above all of them. Well, yeah. Which is back here. We, uh, yeah, we, we can't see it because you've got a tiger there. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Paying homage to... Uh, to uh, Siegfried and Roy. Yeah, uh, actually, this is my tiger. You guys didn't believe that I bought a tiger last week? Well, here's the real tiger right here. Look, scratchy. Scratchy makes scratchy. I'm waiting, for him to, I'm waiting for him to chew on your head. Oh, he's going to. He's going to. Uh, what else we, did you uh, see, We also watched oh, sorry, uh, A sorry, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Oh, the... Um, Mr. Rogers. How was that? Uh, it was really, really good. That's the one with Tom Hanks? Yep. Okay. And yeah, Matthew Reese. Yeah. Uh, it was really, really good. Is there any conflict in it? Um, <laughs> it didn't look like much in the show, yeah, in the t- trailer. But it's, it's like a, it's more of a personal conflict okay. with, with Matthew Reese's character. Okay. So it's like Mr. Rogers essentially. So Matthew Reese's character gets chosen to write an article about him and it's Mr. Rogers turns out helping him through issues in his life more than him actually writing this, the story that he was supposed to write. He didn't even write about it. He ended up writing, it was supposed to be like a 400 word little write up for like a profile. Mm -hmm. And then it, it turned out to be a 10,000 word, feature story that had really nothing to do with Mr. Rogers. Okay. But it was, it was really, really good. Has anybody watched, uh, the new Amazon series upload? Nope. 
I have not even heard of this series. I saw the previews for it, and I it looks dumb. So we're two. We got two episodes left. I couldn't believe it. My wife and I actually binge watched eight episodes in two days. I was like, woohoo! Now it helps that the first episode is like fifty minutes, and the rest are like twenty eight to thirty. But okay, so the real quick premise is that a guy uh, in the future twenty two thousand thirty three, you can die, and before well before you die, you can upload your consciousness, your memories into a hard drive. Um, and then, uh, basically you pay based on how much money you have, um, you pay to go to these virtual reality heavens with your consciousness. Um, so you either take a chance of you like this guy, he's in Iraq and he has to decide, does he take this, you know, surgery to possibly save his life? But if he dies, he doesn't know where he's going. You know, there could be an afterlife. There couldn't be, or he could try to just say, you know what? I don't want to take a chance on surgery. I'm just going to kill myself, basically, in the hospital and upload my brain. Um, Choose to die and let my brain be uploaded. Yeah. And then you know 100% that it's a virtual you know, reality heaven. So that, that's what happens. Uh, it's, it's enjoyable. Um, it, and then, basically, there's uh, people. There's uh, the corporate side of it. Like, you know, he, everybody has a team of angels is what they're called, their customer service reps that have, like, avatars that come into this <laughs> world. Um, and they, and the, the angel and him basically fall in love, and that's a, obviously a big no-no. Um, but it is funny, like, every time an angel hits, uh, does a job, because you can just say, angel, come here. Uh, every time that happens, um, every time that happens you have to yelp that you have to do a review like on yelp like one to five stars and that's how their whole corporate world survives so the one point is well i would like to give you this raise but you're only a 4.6 you need to be a 4.7 so on the scale of one to five um but so it's like uber drivers yes so uh but it's enjoyable like there's parts of it like his girlfriend who's like this social socialite She's paying for it all because he doesn't have has, has money. So she's paying for it, his still living girlfriend. But so he can't get like upgrades. He can't get a spa treatment. He can't get Doritos because it cost more. So it's like in game purchases. So and then there's like another level that is if you don't have unlimited data, you know, you only have like five, 5G until like, so it could go out during the week and your brain just freezes until the next time your data comes in. Um, so there's different worlds and all that. And basically there's a murder mystery, but they don't really like do a lot with the murder mystery. Like sometimes they take it seriously. And That's in the last two episodes. What's that? That's going to be in the last okay. two episodes. <laughs> so it, it's enjoyable. It's not as funny as I thought. It's a dark comedy, but it's a lot more serious on the topics than I thought. Um, I thought it was going to be well, a sitcom. Jay, you, said, you, said, you said Good Girls was a comedy. It was a sitcom. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, Jim, even my wife said it's not a comedy. So there you go. That's, that's an outsider. You even your wife. Your, your, your wife has common sense. Yes. Well, she married me. <laughs> well, she had too much to drink that year. Decade. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, uh, I will have a review up on season one of nerdly.co.uk. Uh, it should be out this week, just to let you guys know. Uh, but like I said, it's uh, from Greg Daniels who did the office, the American version. So, ah. but, and they renewed it for season two. They just renewed it. So Ooh. it's like I said, if you got time, it's not bad to watch. So, um, anybody else got anything? Yeah, the other movie I watched, I watched The Goldfinch. Oh. Um, it was entertaining. Um, I think I read uh, Is that based that? on the book? Based on the book, yeah. It's pretty much uh, a kid uh, mom dies in a bombing at the, met, at the uh, New York Metropolitan Museum of Art. Mm. And... And he, uh, it's then him growing up. But when after bombing, he was looking at this painting, and it and it fell, and he took it with him. And uh, it's kind of just, and then everybody in his life is just shitty to him, pretty much, and leads to a bunch of problems. And has him as a kid, and it gets kind of goes to an adult, and it flashes back and forth, and and pretty much deals with him. Actually, end up how is he going to return the painting and. 
but Jeffrey writes in it, and every time he talks, it's like, man, I want he should have been somebody on my list to uh, narrate my life. <laughs> <laughs> Is it uh, was it worth it uh, worth watching? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I okay. mean, it, I, I know some people didn't like it, but I'm pretty liberal on on movies I like, so. Uh, what what's your? I, I don't know if I'd watch it again right now. But if it's on, if it's on, and I don't have anything else on it, I might not turn it off. <laughs> what's your stance on thirteen it, going on thirty? Uh, I would turn that off. Okay, just checking, <laughs> just checking. <laughs> but Mark Ruffalo is dreamy. Oh, Mark <laughs> Ruffalo. Um, speaking of movies, uh, first off, we're getting into the Twitter poll of the week. You can. Uh, Find us at Bad Ideas Podcast on Twitter, uh, and also the History of Bad Ideas on Facebook. Uh, like our page there. Uh, did you know? So we're 24 minutes into the show, and we're finally into Twitter poll of the week. That's the quickest we've been into the Twitter poll of the week in like six weeks. I blame Blake. I think it's Blake because he's not here right now. I'm going with it. I can Probably. talk about. I can talk about more stuff. Do you want me to? I can do a we, recap on uh, uh, we, the we voice. We haven't done our 30-minute uh, uh, dissertation on uh, Westworld. Or Oak Island. <laughs> oh, they found nothing on Oak Island. Okay, Oak, we're done with oh, wait, Oak Island. We talked Westworld. Should I take off my headphones and go away for a half hour again? <laughs> well, there's nothing new to talk about because we talked about the the last uh, the, finale, yeah. the finale last week. So Yeah, I know. When I took off my headphones and walked away for a half hour. <laughs> Although when Jason was talking about uploaded or whatever, kind of it reminded me of Westworld season two. This, How they were all, all they were all being uploaded into an, an afterlife. I would say that this upload upload doesn't have as many killings, but that's not entirely true. <laughs> there, there is some killing in it, a decent amount. So killing in the name of. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We had, oh, first off, thanks to everybody for, uh, sending in on Twitter. Uh, we, we requested ideas for top fives because, uh, intern Hackney was running out of top five ideas after 300 and something episodes. So, uh, thank you to everybody that did that. You guys rock. Appreciate you guys, uh, picking up my slack. Yeah. And, and for the people whose ideas we insulted, thank you too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tw- <laughs> Twitter poll of the week this week is what will be the highest grossing film of 2020? Um, they're mostly coming out in August. We talked about that last week. Um, the fir- uh, We had Wonder Woman 1984, uh, A Quiet Place 2, two uh, Black Widow, and Godzilla vs. Kong. Okay, so on this one, there was actually one more change once after we uh, went to press on this one um we had in just less than 24 hours we had 109 votes so thank you for that that was nice Uh, yeah the just i'm not even looking at the final results and they changed drastically from the last time i saw it yeah so at one point wonder woman was running away with it so uh that that did not happen uh (laughs) so a quiet place two is in last place with six percent of the vote uh in third place Black Widow at 21% and winning 45% to 28%, Godzilla versus Kong over Wonder Woman. And I, I was shocked. Uh, now, mind you, Men in Black, or not Men in Black, uh, Bad Boys for Life uh, is at 441 million ish uh, worldwide. So they're number one right now. So they're thinking, people are thinking Godzilla versus Kong will overtake that. Thoughts? Well, it's just. The question, we're talking worldwide box office? Uh, I think Godzilla versus Kong might do better at worldwide than, say, Wonder Woman. I, it was put as highest but, grossing film, so I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, worldwide. Okay. Domestically, I think my guess would have been Wonder Woman, but worldwide I could see Godzilla versus Kong. I, I, I agree. Um, the only thing that might help Godzilla is not all of American theater, American movie theaters will be maybe open in August. Uh, or, well, actually, I think it comes out in September. But China is opening up a lot of their things, and they're big on Godzilla. Same with Japan. Yeah. So, um, 
I, I still don't know if Wonder Woman's going to make it to uh, go and make it to theaters uh, this year. I, I still wouldn't be surprised if that goes to video on demand, even Black Widow. I could see Black Widow doing it more than Wonder Woman. You think? <laughs> well, the only reason Wonder Woman do it is if theaters don't open. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, so, I, I would be surprised if theaters aren't open by August. Uh, well, yeah, you, what's that, Jim? What made you pick these four movies? So I looked at the um, I looked at the, what was coming out, and I was I actually had uh, uh, Bad Boys for Life in there, and then I took it out because I was like, oh, let's see if a new movie could do it. Um, these were listed on a couple different websites as the uh, most not anticipated, but big, uh, biggest movies of the year. There was, uh, I think they, they each one no had like five to what ten. About, what about No Time to Die? That's next James, year. That got pushed back to next year? I thought so, or is that, or did I miss that? That was August. Let me That's one of the first ones to come out. That was supposed to come out already, and yeah, they pushed that. it back. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be out in March, I think. November twenty fifth, twenty twenty. I apologize, I missed that one. Yeah, the uh, what about Tenet? That I could not find anything on. Somebody actually did okay. ask about that. It was it's supposed to be out end of July, I think July twenty fifth or something, July twentieth. And I that was the seen, initial release date. Yeah, I have not seen anything on if it's been pushed back or what. I've heard nothing about it. Um, I could see them moving it back towards Christmas, maybe with the Nolan film. Um, but and that was everything. So that was another one I looked at with Tenant. I just did it. There was too many variables if it was even coming out this year or if he's holding off. Um, so I, I'm just I just pulled this up and there's an article that says uh, that was just posted um, at the end of last week saying that it's more likely that it's going to get pushed to 2021. Tenant. Okay. No, uh, no time to die. Sorry. Oh, oh. wow. <sighs> yeah, I mean, at this point, I think all of, a lot of them is. That, that's why I said I don't even know if Wonder Woman opens in August. I mean, I, I, I don't have much faith that it does. Um, but I know it could be hell. You know what? The rate could drop with uh, the virus and we may be OK. Uh, and they may start opening a lot more things up. We'll find out in a month. Uh, I was uh, I was being optimistic there, Brian. I know. Uh, right now, Tenet is still scheduled to open up July 17th. Wow. Huh. Uh, no one wants to be the movie that wants that to be the movie that opens theaters back up. Wow. Good for AMC because they said they're not opening until they get uh, new releases. AMC theaters. Huh. Well, good thing AMC is going to get bought out by yeah. Amazon. Hey, AMC. So AMC's yeah. not going to be showing any, uh, was it Warner Brothers? Yeah. Or Universal? Universal. Yep. Universal, yeah. So, okay. Stock price is so low. <laughs> uh, so and is it's AMC t- just going to change their name to AMZ when Amazon buys them? Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> well, AMC's stock was low, and then Amazon rumors came out yesterday or two days ago, and then their stock shot up a little bit. Um, cause they said Amazon's been looking to get into movie theaters. So they have basically yeah. a direct line with video on demand and <laughs> that. Yeah. Uh, the problem is the question will be, you know, uh, the monopoly and whatnot. And if they're allowed to, cause studios, I don't think are allowed to own the, the theaters. Oh, okay. Um, and Amazon is a producer of movies, so mm-hmm. they might like, they couldn't show their own movies. I, I think the yeah. I, I don't know the specifics, but uh, I mean that's like Disney. You, know, you think that you they would love to own the theaters to show them, but uh, right. uh, yeah, the, the monopoly rules uh, and it's confusing and it changes every day. Uh, number one fan, Doug, uh, Disney fan. He actually talked, uh, I don't know if it was on our show or not, or it was off the air, but he was talking that years ago um, that Disney wanted to, and it might have been Bob Iger, he wanted to be able to sell the DVDs or Blu-rays or whatever at the time of the movies that you just saw in theaters right as you came out of the theater. Yeah. So if you went and saw 
you know, I don't know, Beauty and the Beast live action, you could walk out of that theater then and be uh, able to buy it for 20 bucks outside the movie theater. And I guess they there was too much pushback from the movie theaters because of repeat business. Um, yeah. But I thought that was a, I mean, it's a clever idea. I mean, it's obviously changing the movie theaters and what they're doing. A lot easier to do today. Just you get a code. Nope. You buy it and you get a digital code with it, and then load the movie after you paid for the ticket. <laughs> yeah, because um, I know every time we buy a freaking uh, Blu-ray film, it, you always get the digital code with it. So yeah, you can take anywhere. So those damn things expire. Do they? Yeah. Like, if you don't use it after a certain date, then it won't be good. So, like, you can't go back to your old stuff and then start downloading it because the codes don't work anymore. Uh, I was quite upset because Ultraviolet, which was a streaming service with one of the companies, Paramount, I think, they closed up shop. So now I no longer have the digital version of uh, Cowboys vs. Aliens. Really upset by that. Really upset oh. by that. <laughs> Shit! I which, again, is another reason... Why digital and cloud stored uh, uh, movies are terrible way to go? I got because, the Blu-ray. I got the Blu-ray. It came yeah, yeah. Out. I don't know. You need to have the phys- a physical copy. Otherwise, mm-hmm. there's no guarantee that it'll be there when you actually want to watch it. Correct. That's why you just get a membership to Brian Buster. Ooh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> There's there's still one in the country that's still open. Is it in, <laughs> is it in Cincinnati? Uh, it is not. Oh. It's in Norwood. Oh, I <laughs> got you there. <laughs> We're a city within a city. <laughs> uh, Jeff, why don't you do listener feedback? We'll switch it up this week. You want to do listener feedback? Okay, let me. Where is Blake? <laughs> Since we don't have a uh, box office stuff. <laughs> oh, no, oh, we yeah. do. We do have box office numbers this week. We do have it, but it's not as big as it. It's still. It's, uh, bigger, than it, it's bigger than it has been the last six weeks. Yeah. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. Okay. Listener feedback. Oh, I don't have a sponsor because I didn't know it was going to be my responsibility. Uh, a sponsor by vodka. Sure, the bomb listener feedback sponsored by vodka. I like it. Uh, starting with uh, Doug, number one fan. Hey, pants. Can't give yourself a nickname. Can't give yourself a nickname. Dad. <laughs> well, anyway, he says so. Jason can have on friends in the background while he works, but he can't have on Jessica Jones. What's wrong with him? Sadly, we don't have enough time to discuss it. Mm -hmm. I don't think. (laughs) Well, I'm going to come to Jason's defense on this. When you're working, you can't turn on something that you need to pay attention to. Correct. So, like, Friends, I mean, nothing happens in Friends that you wouldn't already know or even matters. But Jessica Jones, you need to pay attention to what's going on. It's tough to watch when there's distractions and I'm assuming your work will have distractions from your television viewing. Yes. I spent uh, three and a half hours today on with uh, one particular dilemma. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, multiple phone calls, but a total of my nine hour day was three and a half hours with this thing. So that, yeah. So I actually have to pay attention when I'm working um, the, I will say the more that friends is on in the background, the more I really hate all of them. I really am despising <laughs> every single one. Ross is the fucking worse. Um, Rachel is just a bitch. I can't stand her. Ross is too. He's a bitch. Um, I don't like either of them. They're both toxic towards each other. Um, Joey is, I guess the best one out, out of all of them. Maybe he likes sandwiches. So I'm good. I'm good with that. I like sandwiches. <laughs> Um, Courtney Cox is. But just, he does treat women like shit, though. He, yeah, Joey he treats does. women like shit. Yeah, he does. Phoebe, Phoebe for the win. Ugh, no, her mom storyline. I told you that last week. I can't. Fuck that. 
Oh, my uh, God. That, that was a half a season out of nine seasons. It's that oh. bad. <laughs> uh, Chandler, I guess, is okay. I don't know. But he's very needy. Like, if Monica's going off like she sees uh, uh, the, the mustache guy, Tom Selleck. Richard. Yeah. Like, she saw him after she was, like, engaged to Chandler, and he gets all bent out of shape, like, you're not going to see him again. And she's like, I ran into him at a grocery store, and we went out to dinner for, like, just as friends. You're not seeing him again. Fucking calm down, Chandler. No wonder you're... But knowing her history with him, that every time she saw him, she was swooning over him, even after they broke up for, like, two years. Have some confidence. Uh Well, A, he has none, and B, he's still better than... Oh, 80, 90 percent of the population when it comes to jealousy. True, true, true. I mean, just real people in general tend to be worse than what Chandler was. You know, my wife can't keep my hands off you, Jeff, and I'm fine. I'm OK. I'm not jealous. Every time I don't she want you. your wife to put your my, hands on me. My wife can't keep my hands <laughs> off of you. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true. That is true. I meant to say that. Come here, Jeff. Woo, I'm all hands. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> hey, I can't help it if I'm your wife's uh, gorilla bear. You are. You are. You know, just to make you jealous, Jeff, uh, I had some of my wife's cheesy goodness tonight. And by cheesy I am goodness, a I mean homemade mac and cheese. Mm, I am a little jealous. So damn good. So oh, damn Jason good. just disappeared there. Yeah, Jason, yeah. <laughs> when you put the uh, paper up in front of you, you disappear. So this Tiger King background is kind of odd. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's like a green screen. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. It's <laughs> the point of it, yes. <laughs> Simmer down, people. Uh, let's see. Uh, any so now you're going to make me figure out how to do this background stuff, and I'll do that next week. Do you have a laptop? Yeah. Okay, so you should be able to. Brian was trying to figure out that it's not as easy on the iPad, or they may not have it. Okay. It's not. It's not in the settings on the iPad. Okay. Uh, what else we got, Jeff? Let's go back. Well, let's go back to Doug for one second. Mm-hmm. How come he doesn't come up since we're in quarantine? Is he too good to Skype, or does he not know how to uh, work uh, electronic devices? You know, I'll go with B. You know what? That's a that good is call. a great question. Hey, have you have you even invited him, Jason? Have you called him? No. Or do you not call? He's got to have you a better system than there, Jim. Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it, uh, uh. Uh, what else we got, Jeff? Uh, from Bob. What streaming services fantasy series are you most excited for? Witcher Season 2, The Wheel of Time, or Lord of the Rings? Uh, None of those for me. (laughs) Uh, Of those, I'll guess The Wheel of Time. Is that the turtle? Because if I was... Yes, that's... No, it's not that turtle. (laughs) Uh... Since I haven't seen Witcher season one, except for maybe the first episode, I suppose I'm not that interested in The Witcher. And I doubt Lord of the Rings will be as good as the the movies that Jason refuses to watch. Uh, so, Wheel of Time by default. Jim? Uh, having read the entire Wheel of Time, that would be, be more expansive than Game of Thrones. And... I can see them doing it really poorly if they try and rush it. Um, what platform I, I, is that I, hanging out on? Uh, that was that Amazon. Wheel of, uh, Amazon has Lord of the Rings, and I think it has all three, don't they? Oh no, Netflix is Witcher, um, Wheel yeah, of Time, yeah. and uh, I believe Am- uh, Lord of the Rings is Amazon. I'll double check for you right now. And which. Lord of the Rings story are they following up with? Are we going to? Uh, I I want to know stuff that they did. I want to know about the the two blue uh, wizards. Yeah, I think <laughs> they nothing's were... written. About. Oh, so make up your own stuff. Yes, I think they were going back to the 
I don't know, I could be wrong, but to the uh, the big war or whatever, the first stage or whatever they call okay. it. Okay. The first stage, yeah, with Alessandil and how the forming of the rings and uh, the fracturing of the sword. Uh, yes. Yeah. And the re- reason why they sent uh, the, the five wizards down to Middle Earth and. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I, I was under the impression that there wasn't even going to be a whole lot necessarily about the rings, but just the, that time period. And But I don't know. I could be completely wrong. Um, Wheel of Time is on, uh, what do you call it, um, Amazon. Amazon? Yeah. Yep. Amazon, okay. Um, Amazon! Uh, I'm actually, I've been seeing a lot of previews for uh, Snowpiercer. I'm actually in... Uh, interested in that why why uh, I, I don't know why <laughs> stop what what what's going on <laughs> i don't need to see joe exotic and his seven husbands i'm really enjoying this background <laughs> you can it doesn't surprise me that he invited you <laughs> i think jason might be his eighth husband <laughs> For those on podcast listening, uh, on our Skype, uh, on our YouTube video, uh, I've been changing the Joe Exotic backgrounds, and this one is him and his getting married to his two uh, other lovers. Uh, so I'm invited. Hello. So this is fun. I like this. <laughs> we have very different. We have very different definitions of fun. Uh, we're going to have a contest. Uh, see how many uh, screens, different screensavers I had or backgrounds I had, and you can win a prize if you let us know on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast. So I guess about no. so we are. Yeah. No. no. So uh, this no. is just proof that why we shouldn't be doing video because <laughs> Jason finds this stuff amusing. <laughs> oh, where'd you go? It's <laughs> a little thing. Sorry. I'm from the paper. Did you disappear into his pants? <laughs> <laughs> or in his in his hat. Whoop. <laughs> Anyways, what else we got? Uh Jeff? From 143, I think. Uh from 143 at Breaker 6696. Uh why do I tend to be hornier when I smoke cigars? Because uh, you have an oral uh, fixation? Sorry. Yeah, and they're phallic. Very. <laughs> Sigmund gotta... Freud wrote a book on that? Uh, I do like cigars. I don't know and if Jason really likes to stick things in his mouth. <laughs> I, uh, oh, I, oh, I can't smoke cigars. That, that taste that just sticks in your mouth for almost a week later. Oh. No matter how often you brush your teeth or gargle with scope, you just can't get rid of that cigar because, you know, it stays in your throat and your lungs for way too long. I love, Nasty. I love Gar- cigars, but... Uh, Gar- what's that, Jim? I'm sorry. Gargle? I uh, <laughs> no, you don't drink the scope, Jim. <laughs> uh... uh Jim does. You guys are doing it wrong. <laughs> you you try and inhale it so it gets into the lungs. It'll disinfect and clean that stuff out. Bleach. My wife said that uh, anytime I have a cigar, it, she's like, you just need to like move away. She can't get near me because you're right, Jeff. Like, it doesn't come out of your throat. It doesn't. It stays on your clothes, everything. And I love cigars, but yeah, I, I haven't smoked one in, in years just because of that. Um, it's like, well, you got to see me. You got to be around me. Obviously, if it's making you, you know, nasty, then or making me nasty, then that's fine. But I do enjoy oh, yeah. it. <laughs> and they got to be good cigars because nothing is worse than the smell of a cheap cigar. No. What's the what's the quick and coals or what is that? The small ones with the white caps on them. What's your sweets? Yeah, or the mild ones. What is that? <laughs> Sweet and mild. Black and mild. Black, Black and, mild. and mild. There we go. So, uh, what else we got, Jeff? Uh, we've got from Dev, the Psy Guy. <sighs> Aside from podcasting, what activity do you miss the most? Dev's is all the beers with people. Brian? Brian's good at all the beers. I, yeah, that's a very fun game I like to play. It's, it's called Drink the Beer. Um, and, and what happens when you win? 
you get another beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very fun game. What happens when you lose? You get another beer. Okay. <laughs> Is there a loser in that game? I've been playing for well over 10 years, and I have never come across a loser and drink the beer. Would your wife disagree? <laughs> No. Okay. okay. She's actually pretty good at it too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're we're very uh, we're very good. Drink the beers. Okay. Jeff, what do you miss? Uh, pub trivia. Mm. It, uh, yeah, the, the 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 weekly trivia fix. So now we've been doing it remotely. There's been a lot of uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Companies around the country that have been doing like uh, uh, Twitch streams and whatnot, and I suppose like asking for donations to keep them afloat uh, while they do that. So, so that that that's curbed some of the the itch to to have to play, but it's still it's fun to go out and yeah, and just the social interactions with the people and winning. All the time because I always win. Uh, <laughs> Jim, what do you miss? Uh, I'd say right now bowling, uh, bowling league. That was just uh, a good chance to go out and bowl and play, drink the beer, <laughs> interaction, talking to people. Yeah, I miss. Uh, I miss game night. I miss game night. Uh, <laughs> With the nows, uh, yeah, uh, it's been fun. To, well, it it hasn't been fun because we haven't been getting together. But when we did get together, it was. Yeah, yeah. Well, well since it's going to be less than six of us, we can still play. We'll come on over this week. I don't know about this week, but I have thought about um, since it is summertime and the, you know it's more light out. We could do you know people wear masks and you know like Halloween masks. I want Halloween masks. Uh, and then, oh, can I use your Kevin James mask? No. <laughs> uh, but I thought about playing outside or even, you know, eventually getting co- more comfortable with a couple people, you know, playing games and that. So uh, the first game we're playing is Who's in My Mouth? So just to let you guys know, that's the first <laughs> game we're playing. So uh, According to this uh, video that we're on, it's the microphone. Since your mouth keeps disappearing <laughs> into the microphone, <laughs> actually, it's the preacher lady right now that he knows. <laughs> <laughs> Do you follow the rules of the rules of the road? <laughs> uh, the rules of the what? Road. The rules of the rules is what he said. But yeah, the rules of the rules. The road of the rules. I hate you all. <laughs> no, you don't. You love us, each and every one of us. I do. Uh, okay, what else we got? Jeff. Oh, that's me. I uh, was waiting for Blake to say something. <laughs> uh, we got Steve from EILFM. Uh, he says, uh, those Steve and Izzy cats that did the top five heroes that are villains were great. When, when are they coming back? Uh, I like yeah, Steve. Jason. Steve and did did you give him a call? Uh, let's see if they're on. You know what? I will call them. <laughs> Give them a call. It might be right now. <laughs> or it might not be. We'll check, though. I All have right. been randomly calling people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm calling them. <laughs> we'll I'm see. calling. Steven is. <laughs> We're calling. We'll see how that goes. So uh, we can do something else, though, in the meantime, Jeff, while they're, we're waiting. Right, while we're seeing if they respond, yes. uh, we'll go on to uh, Professor Number One at Dr. Number One. He wants to nominate a Worsley Award uh, nominee. Uh, the woman who was attacked and killed by an alligator in the gated community in South Carolina. She was visiting a client to do her nails and was trying to touch the gator when he, she was grabbed and killed. Worsley approved. <laughs> I'm fine with that. See, it to me it doesn't fit the 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 scope of the award. It's just not dying stupidly. It's dying unnecessarily 
even though you think you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do something good for humanity and just get yourself killed. And I don't know if petting an alligator... Petting an alligator is trying to do something... Yeah, she's trying to pet an alligator. She she doesn't look like it, so the alligator shouldn't have eaten her. Mm -hmm. No, those were some of her last words were, I don't look like a deer... And that she yeah. tried to pet the gator. I missed that. <laughs> okay. Yes. So this is a very hot button for me because I hate that the alligator had to be killed because of this. Yes. Yeah. This dumb bitch walked out into waist deep water trying to pet an alligator. And guess what? An alligator did what alligators do. Mm hmm. Shit comes in their territory, they eat it. They're an apex predator. It's kind of like that's what they do. It's kind of like uh, the bear in Gatlinburg a couple years ago that ate uh, that killed somebody and ate, uh, ate part of their body. They hunted it down the uh, fish and game wardens, yeah. but they didn't kill it. They just wanted to track it, and it's like good for them. That's what good. they do. Yeah. You're in you're sure. in their home. I mean, the lady knew it was there. Mm-hmm. And- the community, the people, the, the house that she was at told her it would like to get away from it because a week before they saw it come out of the water and eat a full size deer. But no, this dumb bitch wanted to wade out into the water and be like, oh, look, uh, I'm a stupid bitch. Is it Ross? Is it Ross? It's not Ross. No. Oh. So that's what really irritates me is that the animal has to die because it was being an animal. Yep. It was doing what it does, and because of this dumb bitch, it had to die. Hey, Jim, I should have taken a drink every time he said dumb bitch this episode. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah, yeah I need a refill. <laughs> um, well, it looks like we have a, neat, a title for the show, Dumb Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> we did get a, we asked a couple weeks ago, a COVID or, it's a new segment, uh, it's from Besada Geek. COVID-19 or I'm Megan segment. You have to pick one to keep. Um, and if you have if you have other options next week, uh, let us know. Uh, COVID or we had COVID or Heinz Ward. Everybody picked COVID above Heinz Ward. Uh, this time it's COVID or I'm Megan. I'm Megan. Jeff, what do you pick? As much as I'm Megan drives me crazy, if it means getting rid of covid I would do I'm Megan every week. I'm Megan. But we have to get rid of COVID for that to happen. I'm Megan yeah. Markle. And hey, it has COVID, to be in the next two the, weeks. Yeah, if there's a cure from COVID in the next two weeks, we would do I'm Megan every week. Shut up, you old lady. I'm Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? Uh, but I, oh, go ahead, Brian. What, would, what do you say? COVID all the way. <laughs> <laughs> all the way. Uh, no hesitation, case, huh? I, I'm picking on Megan. I, 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 I had it. He's taking, he's taking on Megan. <laughs> <laughs> We're keeping on Megan. But, I want on Megan. <laughs> but uh, I had somebody uh, text me a, a, a little question. And I thought it could become a segment. Okay. Instead of draft day, we become draft analysts. And we give people an idea to draft something. Like, I got sent, the people like, can you grade our draft? They did Friday Night, Light char- Friday Night Lights characters. And so I went and I did a, a, an analysis of their draft. Okay. I think we should have people do, like, we can talk to Steve and Izzy when they do their, uh, if they do some of their draft stuff anymore they can come to us and we can do a skit we can do a little bit about where the draft analysts like where the Mel Kuypers and where the talking heads on ESPN I like it <laughs> and I then like we run the drafts I like it a lot to grade that draft so, so we don't want to pick yeah. by pick is how we grade it ooh that's a bad pick this early in the draft like that type of shit yeah or, <laughs> oh yeah just to let you know, I'm Megan is still out there. God, I hate you. <laughs> you know, I, I'm making it, it while COVID is still uh, 
keeping us uh, down, I Megan can't. That's uh, the rules. Brian, I, I have to admit, I've been kind of mean to you this week on Twitter, especially sending you yeah. many, many, many gifts. Yeah, gifts. you've been sending me very <laughs> inappropriate memes <laughs> repeatedly. Lots of spankings. Lots of spankings. So I mean, if you I don't do you want to spank me? No, no. Well, maybe. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> maybe. No, no. <laughs> It got so bad that Chris Hansen uh, <laughs> called me and said, please stop calling Steve. Checked in, like, hey, everything good, man? <laughs> you all right? I'm making sure the intern's uh, above age. Is he okay? <laughs> can we do, can we do, uh, I'm Megan or spanking the intern? <laughs> <laughs> no, because COVID's not involved. <laughs> Oh, okay, here we go. COVID or spanking the intern? There you go. COVID or spanking the intern. I'm keeping spanking the intern. <laughs> Brian? Oh, what what happens go if, COVID. Like, COVID goes away. if COVID goes away next week and we have the I'm Megan segment, can we, do, can we then do I'm Megan versus spanking the intern? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, are you doing God, spanking? I hope Trump. Uh, What's that, Jim? Yeah. I hope Trump cures, the, cures uh, COVID. <laughs> he has a better chance of catching it and dying first. <laughs> He's got a good chance of catching it. Same difference, Same difference isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, well. I heard it was made. No. In, I heard it was made in a lab. Um, anyways, Jeff, do you spank the intern or the COVID? Keep COVID. Uh, I don't want the COVID. So, if I have to give Brian a spanking, oh, to get rid of COVID, I would probably have to do multiple spankings to Brian just to make sure COVID is gone. I would have to repeatedly <laughs> spank. So it's okay. <laughs> There's somebody apparently at my door. Hang on. Oh, uh, I thought the dogs just wanted That's to spank you. Too. It's COVID. <laughs> COVID's at your door. Don't answer. <laughs> Don't answer with COVID. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. That's, how like it lamp gets shark. You. That's how it gets you. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, COVID at the door. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Jeff, give me an intro. Give me a beatbox for uh, News of the Geek. News of the Geek. Uh, per Seattle Times and everybody else, Major League Baseball is coming back. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, as of now, the proposal is an 82-game season starting in July. Uh, preseason, well, sorry, spring training part due starts uh, end of June. Uh, let's see here. Uh, each team will play 82 games against opponents in its own division, plus interleague matchups limited to its own other division. So AL Air. East. So EC, West, West, Central, Central. Yes, yes. Uh, players, p- postseason play would be expanded from 10 clubs to 14, uh, doubling wild cards in each league to four. Uh, teams would prefer to play at their regular season ballparks, but would switch to spring training stadiums or neutral sites if medical and government approvals cannot be obtained. Uh, Tr- Toronto may have to actually have to play their games in Florida. So, hey. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if New York would have been in Florida, too. Uh, the numbers are flat. That's okay. Tampa's going to play in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, uh, the good news. Although, that's true. Well, no, I suppose they won't be having fans in most of the stadiums. I'm about to say, uh, if New York, if the Yankees play in Tampa, then they might actually sell tickets. Um, the good news is that New York is actually plateauing right now, so that's good on deaths and hospitalizations. Oh, are it's down. good. Yeah. Um, and well, they did say that all the stadiums would be there would be no fans in the stadiums um, at this to- at this time. At um, this time, at yeah. The- uh, the All-Star game in a shocker is probably going to be canceled on July 14th. I think you go the opposite way. If the season starts July 1st, have an All-Star game two weeks into it. 
<laughs> Let's go who's, balls to the walls here. Who's doing well right now? He's bad. <laughs> he's bad in six sixty seven. Can he keep it up after a ten at bat or thirteen at bats? I don't know, but he made the All Star game. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Um, basically, they're trying. They're going to have to figure out a way to um, do testing for everybody. Uh, everybody on the team. They did say it's about expanding the play the rosters to forty to fifty um, players. Right now, it's at what twenty six. Well, they, they'd have the they'd have the twenty uh, six man roster, mm-hmm. but then they'd have a since the minor leagues wouldn't be playing, they'd have a taxi squad. Of twenty more players. Okay. 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 That's a makes sense. So, so, people you can call up and, and but this is the but, and those close guys, to being done. The players. The players haven't agreed. The players this. union voted this down, and and Tony Clark is going to take a hard stance, and uh, I don't coming anytime soon. Agreement. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, the, the the proposal includes revenue sharing, and I don't see at all, even for a stopgap emergency measure, players ever agreeing to that. So here's here's what I was getting to. Teams were proposed. Players received a percentage of their 2020 salaries based on 50-50 split of revenues MLB receives during the regular season and postseason, which likely will be among the most contentious contentious aspects of the proposal. Uh, basically. Uh, it's not going to happen, like you said. I mean, they're going to have to figure yeah. something out. Uh, they already are saying that, you know, the team, the owners are wanting the players to take a big pay cut because, you know, you're not playing as many games, blah, blah, blah. There's not as much revenue coming in and that because they're, the stadiums are not selling. Yeah. Well, they'll um, be playing half the game, so correct. they get half their pay. Yeah, sure. Would you? No, but, uh, mm-hmm. The players' union will not agree to prorated salaries. No. So you're playing eight, eight games. You're, you're scheduled to get, make $10 million for a whole 162-game season. Uh, you're playing 80 games. You're getting $5 million. No, they want the whole 10. They, they want yeah, their well, contracts to be honored fully. Yeah, well, there's no way the owners are going to be – I mean, they're not getting enough money to even pay half the salaries, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah well, I know. So, I mean – I'm just saying that's what the players want. So. Yeah, they said they ori- originally wanted to do um, teams play like ten teams uh, per division, three divisions, ten teams in one part of Arizona, ten teams in Florida, ten teams somewhere else. The issue they said is that the players didn't want to be away from their families, especially during this time. And yeah, um, they that so that was one of the ideas, but they said no. Um, they said if this was to work. Uh, with 30 teams, and if they had 50 players, along with staffs of 40 to 50 people, they would need 3,000 tests needed uh, for weekly or biweekly testing. So per t- per team. So that's a whole lot of test. So, well, if you want a test, you can get a test. So. Uh huh. I mean. Uh huh. According to the to the president. That's so, right. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, can just walk out to the mailbox and get day. one, right? I mean, and the, pr- the president gets tested every day, so the tests are available. That you just have you just have to go out. And- you just have to become president to get one every day. Yeah, uh, you know if Trump can well, be president. I oh. <laughs> um, if I wanted one, I couldn't get one. Would you guys be interested in this uh, baseball? I'm oh, in. Yeah, as soon as they start playing. Yeah, I want I, them to come. Yeah, yeah, I'm really interested in them playing, so it'd be great. But I also, I know it's got to make sense for all parties involved too. Well, they're talking uh, other sports like baseball, or I'm sorry, uh, NBA and MLB. They're, or I'm sorry, not NHL. Sorry, NBA and NHL. They were talking about you know trying to finish the season that. In those two seasons, I say just finish. It's it's canceled. Just be done with it. There's no reason to do it. Come back strong, hopefully in October, and you know do it that way. Um, I can think of a reason to do it. Money. But no, it's because I was doing real well in fantasy hockey, and I made <laughs> trades, uh, trading away draft picks for next year, and now I got nothing to show for it. That so yeah, true. I. 
Besides I would love that. to see NHL finish. <laughs> but I mean, they're yeah, talking- the a- the AHL canceled the rest of their season yesterday. Yeah. So. It- you know, it's different with baseball because they haven't started the season. You can try to do a, you know, a split season, whatever. You you know, you can think of ideas. With the NBA, it's like at this point, why even try? They keep trying to come back with it. They said, we'll possibly start, you know, the rest of the season in, no, in October or November. And I'm like, at that point. what? what and you're already on to the next season. Yeah. So you're going to fuck up a season, one season or another. So just at this eat point, the rest of the schedule and just yeah. call it a call it a day. Yeah, I mean, instead of screwing up two years, correct. So, but then again, I mean, chances are next year is going to be screwed up too. So, uh, and yeah, if, they're not probably get a chance to start on time next year as it is, let alone finish what they just finish. right. Do you think anything will go? Do you think we will go back to normal in the next two to three years? Like yes. with, with the stadiums and that. Do you think it would work? Do you think we will? I think so. You think? Oh, I think my ne- next. I I think the NFL season. Uh, I think the Super Bowl we played in a full stadium. Wow. Okay. So that's February twenty twenty one. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, the NFL season. The NFL season's coming. Uh, I joked about it on NF on Twitter that it's not coming. NFL's coming, uh, coming. Whether they have fans or not is the bigger question. Um, but uh, you know, I I really hope everything goes back. To, I don't know about normal, but I hope that we Please. go back to crowds with just everything. But I don't know if we ever will. I, I mean, at least for a long time. I don't know. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't think anything's gonna be normal mm-hmm. again but i don't think anything will be like how it how it was in the past i think you'll see a lot of you'll see a decrease in attendance at a lot of things like concerts or music festivals or you know stuff like that i think for a year at least before people a lot of people feel comfortable they said, uh, yeah, I think it was, was it you? Uh, oh, we got Blake on the show. Hey, Blake. Hello. Hello. We're on News of the Geek. Blake. Oh, excellent. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. I had a lot of things I had to take care of. Y- you know, Blake? It happens. It's perfectly fine. Uh, but, my is- hair, but my hair is clean now. Did you get a haircut? <laughs> no. no. Oh. Saying he I, was wash- had to- washing, I was washing my hair. Oh, <laughs> There you go, haircut. And so the funny thing is, Blake, we're almost done with News of the Geek. We're flying through this episode. We think it might be you that slows us down. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, we, see you later. No, 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 no. <laughs> we think it's because of your 45-minute diatribe about Oak Island. We think that's the reason. <laughs> well, since you talked about Oak Island, you brought it up. You want me to... Way to go, Jason. You know, I guess, I guess I probably should uh, tell you that uh, they didn't find any treasure this season. What? 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 Come what? on. I know it may be shocking. Wow. Did they find but, buttons? But, you know, they, they found a, a coin and a button and lots of buried wood. <laughs> Blake, uh, but that buried good wood thing is a is treasure. That they're, they're discussing the possibility that you know, they may go like this huge, big, uh, giant digging operation that's going to cost millions of dollars. <laughs> Why? Why? Haven't they already? Yeah, haven't they already? Millions of dollars? Yeah. Haven't they already it, made it, it, millions of dollars off of this TV show? Yeah, well, that's the real treasure. It's all the uh, promotions that they get out of it, you know? But uh, the, the funny part is, is that. Uh, <clears throat> You know, they, they they didn't find anything. And I remember there was this big deal about the eye of the swamp, and it is pretty cool. I mean, there, there, there was some kind of paved road that they had on the island, and at some point in time, they flooded it and made it into a swamp. And, you know, what was pretty interesting is that they did have a guy in there talking about, oh, yeah, well, you know, if you take this up here, this blue eye, the, you know, eye hole, there's this, this uh, blue clay, which would have been, uh, pretty important for people and building things and 
and uh, they they probably could have did, dug this paved road so they can get this blue blue clay out of here. And they're all they all kind of like. All right, well, let's go move on to the next theory. <laughs> the, the one that historically probably made the most sense is the one that's like, no, we don't want that one. Jason, I don't know what to hate you for the most, your stupid background or for bringing up Oak Island and having Blake go on and on about it. <laughs> well, you know, I may actually uh, drive out there for a, uh, for a man's man vacation with uh, my one fraternity brother and his son. To the Bob Studio, fans of Oak Island as well. So you know, it only takes like twenty-one hours to drive there. Is that it? Well, well it depends on how fast you go. Be, uh, Fourteen days of quarantine when you get into Canada. That could be a problem. Hmm. Blake, Blake. Uh, yeah. Before uh, we go into um, some deep, uh, some more uplifting things, we do have some depressing stuff. Um, could you, do you think, we were just talking about this, and I'm trying to get off the Oak Island talk here. Do you think in the next year or so that we as a country will go back to being normal with stadiums and concerts and everything? Uh, I hope so. Okay, you hope so. What do you think? You know, I'm, I'm starting to side more and more with the conspiracy theorists on, uh, I think, don't do it. The more we Don't know about this virus, I think we did a very good job in tapping everything down real quick. The problem is I think we we did too well of a job, and we didn't have all the facts. Um, and, and here's here's what I look at. I don't read headlines. I don't read uh, news stories. I don't read uh, the loony libertarian uh, wackos on the right. I don't read the blue checkmark, you know, fear porn uh, uh, leftists, you know, I, I read the, I, I get a good email every day that comes from, uh, uh, a work related source. And it gives me all the New York, the New Jersey, the Ohio, the Indiana and the Kentucky, uh, uh, data, you know, and it get, and it's good. This is stuff you can actually go to your own state and look up. And so here, here's the deal, right? Uh, if you are, especially if you're 70 years or older, you've got a problem, you know, just as if you had the regular flu that could do you in or pneumonia as well. So if you are elderly and if you have, uh, you know, it, and, and, and other complicating issues that, you know, that you're subject to, with you know, immune system problems, you know, this is a deadly virus for you and you should be sheltering in place and minimizing your contacts and exposures. But uh, what what I look at is I don't look at the total numbers because the more you test, guess what? Your numbers are going to increase. I look at the positives, the percentages of the positive uh, data, you know, the people that uh, test positive when they get tested, and then the people that actually go into hospitals and the hospitalization numbers is what I like to pay attention to. You know, so as we expand our testing, guess what? We're finding more and more people actually had it. And is that for cause for concern? It's like, well, on one hand, yes. On the other hand, no. And, and they're starting to now do some, uh, you know, backtrack, backtracking genetics on this virus. And now they're saying, there, well, we may have had it in uh, January. You know, now, guess what? The latest is maybe December. <clears throat> and the funny thing is, if you, you talk to you know, some of your peeps out there in California, everybody was sick in January, you know, it is before that we even knew it was a COVID, you know, 19, you know, coronavirus, you know, so I think we did a good job in flattening the curve, which is what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of our hospitals in certain parts of the country, you know, never got the business. New York is an exception. I mean, they had, you know, a lot of the big stuff, you know, going down there, but um, and so if you're from that area, you're going to say, yeah, this is all real. So yeah, because you've been affected the most by it. Right. Which is understandable. But as a whole, I think it's more, per I think it's more permeated through our society than what we realize. Mm -hmm. And I think that we did a good job in flattening the curve and maybe too good of a job in flattening the curve. And that was the whole origination for sheltering in place is to flatten that curve. Right now it's kind of interesting in how people are going. Well, you're, we're supposed to stay out until there's like a vaccine 
or until you know, or until it stops spreading is like it, you can't stop this from spreading. It's impossible. It's, it's never going to stop spreading. Um, so we're doing what we're supposed to do is flatten the curve, and I think we did that too well. And I think as summer comes around, that'll help out. But as more people get exposed and build up herd immunity, and that's good for 95% of the nation. What you got to worry about is the other 5% of the people that are really susceptible you know, to this that what this kills. And I think as we learn more and more about it, you know, ultimately over the next year, you know, we'll be better prepared. But, you know, you, you, you know, you, the normal people like me and you, if you can call our listeners normal, <laughs> we're stuck in the middle. We're stuck in the middle because like everything else is getting hijacked, all these narratives that are getting hijacked from the right and the left, you know, trying to, you know, uh, you know, pull, pull things their way for their own political agendas. And I think that's the bullshit that we have to put up with is, you know, get through the political bullshit and, uh, you know, look for the norm, look for the norm, look for the stabilizing factors. And I think a lot of it is in, in the truth lies in the middle. And I, I think for 95% of the people that is true, the 5%, you know, we need to take, you know, precautions to protect them. I think they should take precautions to protect themselves. Will you wear a mask outside? <clears throat> I wear a mask not as a political statement. If I am in a close well, environment, if I go to Home Depot, lip. if I go to Kroger, if I go to any indoor thing uh, or go to pick up my food from the restaurants, whatever, I wear a mask. Okay. Not because I'm in close confines with somebody that I'm not that I'm exposing myself to or exposing them to me, you know, and I don't know them. And I don't know, you know, and so I do it out of, out of respect for other people because I may be a carrier, and I don't know it, and I'm not going to know it until I get tested. And if I don't have it, la la di da. Now my question is, when am I going to get it? And if I already had it, I'm wearing a mask because it's not to protect me; it's to protect me from spreading it to other people. And I think that's where people misunderstand some things. So if you actually read some of the good things about you know the parts the the parts per million of of this virus and how it can you know regular breathing, sneezing, coughing. And how most of it really, in reality, falls to the ground. You know, the people that you're really going to get sick are in close confines with you, right? So if I'm out on a walking trail, I'm not going to, and I'm outside and, you know, walking around, I'm not going to wear a mask outside because I've looked at the science, I've read the data myself, and uh, odds are it's, that's not how it's going to get transmitted. When we go on walking trails, uh, we've done a lot of hiking trails, um, we, we have the mask in the car before if we have to stop anywhere. Not that we do, but if we in case of emergency. But uh, on the hiking trails, we don't wear masks. Um, and there's on the hiking trails we've gone to, we've got to obviously make sure it's not that ma- populated. Um, oh, my God. Somebody okay, who's it? got a goddamn... Some of them were picking up way too much noise. It's driving <laughs> it's me thing. crazy. Um, like, who's in traffic? Because that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Um, on a positive note, though, do you think that we should have listened to the Princess Bride more? Because he did say that everybody in the future will be wearing masks. Do you feel like we should have listened to the the pirate, the Princess Bride? I feel like I feel like that. Well, if you look time. at the percentage of uh, uh, the luchaderos. Oh, the uh, luchadors. Yes. Yeah, luchadors. Yes. Yes. I agree. Jim, are you outside? Well, you know the princess. No was influenced by uh you know uh uh big old what's his name so on a positive note Andre Giant. let's talk black mirror I, I i apologize i was i was we got very depressing here uh <laughs> this is one from comicbookmovie.com everything has changed and one of which is the entertainment industry for some production has been halted for others narratives have been changed entirely in the case of the black, uh, but in the case of Black Mirror showrunner Charlie Brooker, he is not even bothering to develop a sixth season of the show. During an interview with Radio Times, yeah, Radio Times, 1940s, Brooker said that regarding the state of the show's next season, quote, "I've been busy doing things. I don't know what I can say about what I'm doing and not doing. At this moment, I don't know what stomach there would be for stories about societies falling apart. So I'm not working on another season." <laughs> So basically, we're living in the Black Mirror right now, and he feels like we should not be doing any more of it. That's pretty much what it uh, that's saying. Yep. So, Blake, I'm, I'm sorry, you're not going to get any more pig fucking. 
So I apologize for that. Hey, we can always God. go back and rewatch the first one. It's already there. <laughs> it's already I can't in the get that out of my. It's burned into my brain. I, Thanks, Scab Jeff. I uh, have never seen an episode of Black Mirror. Thanks to Blake for telling me about that. So I appreciate that. I've never watched it either. <laughs> Neither have I. There's some really, there's some really yeah, good episodes. It's pretty enjoyable. <laughs> what? What the hell is that? Uh, Black Mirror is pretty enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> I I always feel like it's fun with Jim on the show because you never know what volume you're getting. <laughs> he's either going to be great or he's going to be the teacher from Charlie Brown or he's going to be the annou- the PA announcer. I love it. <laughs> it's great. I can't tell how I sound, so. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, quickies. Uh, Nev Campbell is in talks to return to Scream 5. Well, my interest in Scream 5 doesn't uh, wanes now. I thought they already made a Scream 5, so that shows you what I know. Uh, I would be okay with it if she dies in the first five minutes, like Drew Barrymore's character. Start fresh. Uh, And good news. Eat fresh? What? Start fresh. Eat fresh? Oh, you're not eating fresh at Subway. (laughs) I am when I take my prop rocket launcher and prop 50 cow in there. I feel much safer. (laughs) Down the hall. Down the hall. Sorry. Me? Okay. <laughs> uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, has been given the green light to continue filming in Prague. Uh, unfortunately, Avatar 2 has been given the green light to uh, start filming again in New Zealand. Uh, Nikki from New Zealand, you need to help us on this. Please do something. Uh, New Zealand has had no COVID cases in like a week. I think you actually need to start spreading COVID because it's COVID or Avatar 2. So, which one do you pick, Jeff? I'll take Avatar 2. Taking COVID. I don't want COVID. <laughs> I'm not saying you're I mean, getting it. I'm just saying in yeah, the world, do you put Avatar 2? No, I don't two? want it in the world. I mean, if, if taking, accepting Avatar 2 means getting rid of COVID, so far, Heinz Ward is the only one I agreed to. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, did, uh, did, I think there's no, that, uh, um, there's no COVID-19 coronavirus in New Zealand because uh, I also read that uh, kiwis uh, build up an immunity to it. So we got to eat more kiwis, too. Ooh. Is that the bird or the fruit? Uh, both. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the newest uh, thing in testing is uh, antibodies from llamas. Yes. <gasps> we have a llama in the studio. Yeah, he's there protecting the studio. We should all be in the studio because we've got the St. Llama to protect us. I'll throw the llama at you. Go ahead. Here it is. Uh, okay, we're <laughs> back in the studio next week. <laughs> 2021. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> December. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, and that's it. That's all I got. Uh, September 11th through 13th is Cincinnati Comic Expo at the Duke Energy Conven- uh, Convention Center, Cincinnati, Ohio. Get your tickets at Duke Energy Convention Center now. Or, sorry, get your tickets at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. You should not be outside. Um, <laughs> Jeff, are you going to be there? I'll be there as long as COVID lets me. Yeah, that would be the other thing, too. Uh, so they are the Highlanders of Comic Expos. Uh, just to let you know, there is only one this year. So get your money and go. That's all I'm saying. Um, hell, Blake may even show up. He's not going to have an excuse because nothing else is going to be open except the Comic Expo. So, well, he still might be uh, in uh, Canada at Oak Island. <laughs> yeah, I may be under quarantine there still. Uh, Steven Costantino is uh, just announced. He played one of the Gamora guards uh, at Jabba's Palace in Return of the Jedi. Uh, so that was nice. Uh, also, the big one, Paige O'Hara. Who is Paige O'Hara? Why? She's the, voice, she's the voice of Belle from Beauty and the Beast, the animated show film. So, oh. you know Doug's going to be, number one fan, Doug's going to be in line for that. So, uh, Keon Young, uh, he is from, um, he played a lot of voice acting, especially G.I. Joe. And also, uh, he was in Sons of Anarchy and Deadwood. So he's going to be there. Uh, Jason Fount. Who is Jason Fount? He is the Red Ranger. 
from Power Rangers Time Force and Power Rangers Wild Force. So just like you know. Hey! Whoa! We almost had Steve in here from. <laughs> oh, I'm getting Steve. him. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, I'm getting him. Uh, <laughs> okay, Jason. Jason, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, the first guy you mentioned, what? who did he play in Star Wars? The Gamora Guard. Yeah, Gamora Guard. That's what he said. Uh, Gamora. Um, so there well, are Marvel green. people in Star the Wars thing? now? Well, they're all owned by Disney, so yeah. And they're all green. How, so. yeah, how do you pronounce that again, Jason? The Gamorian oh, Guard. Gamorian. Okay. You know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with you. <laughs> Brian Drake. <laughs> <laughs> I hate your drinking games when you don't include me. You're included. You should be drinking, too. <laughs> I didn't tonight. Uh, Jeff, let's do some box office news. I'll give you an intro. Box All office right. news at the drive-in. We're going to the drive-in. The drive-in. Okay, don't ever give me an intro ever again. Okay. Uh, the box office news report. Uh, pretty much the box office uh, from May 8th, 2020 to May 10th, 2020. Good weekend. Uh, the Wretched coming in at number one, making $69,608. Nice. A total of 165294 The Wretched. Uh, following that up, number two, How to Build a Girl, made 13201 in its opening weekend. Don't know it sounds like about. a pervy Japanese uh, movie. <laughs> it's about sex dolls, how to build a sex doll. Pretty much. You would know that, Jason. Don't worry about it. Brian, I will it, spank you. But are those well, the sex dolls that will come to life and kill you? Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, when, you're, when, you're in when you're in quarantine, you got to do what you got to do, man. That's right. That's right. Sometimes a cucumber does the job. Uh, How to Build a Girl is uh, the novel charts the journal of a teenage Joanna Mor- Morgan who reinvents herself as Dolly Wilde, a fast-talking lady sex adventurer, moves to London and gets a job as a music critic in hope of saving her poverty-stricken family in Wolverhampton. Coming so of it's age. a British movie. A British movie that came out uh, in 2019. So... Uh, so- Re released here in the state for the drive in uh, crowd. Yay! Uh, coming in at number three, we have Disappearance at Clifton Hill, made $1,764, a total of $23,679. Ooh. Okay, so don't go to Clifton Hill or you might disappear. That's right. Uh, then. Uh, uh, the history of the Kelly Gang, the one that's been on the charts all month long, <laughs> uh, made another $1,456, a total of 32496 Jeff, this might be my favorite box office, the next one, ever. I love this it one. Is my- <laughs> and it's it ranked uh, number five with this amount. Ranked number five in the country, the Burnt Orange Heresy made $45 (laughs) to bring a total to people went saw it (laughs) bring a total of (laughs) $39,633 did they have like dollar showing at the drive-in and they got 45 cars to show up that is my favorite thing ever $45 and you can claim that you were number five in the country (laughs) hey our film is number five in the country so just to put it in perspective Blake, Jim, me, you, and uh, Brian could have put this Skype video up on theaters and only be $45 away from being in the top five this week. I think How much it. of that $45 was actually a guy that went to go see it twice? <laughs> with, a, with a station wagon. <laughs> Thank you, Simpsy Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> Did he tweet it out with his ticket stub and the marquee? <laughs> So, congratulations to the Burnt Orange Heresy. I that is unbelievable. Um, amazingly, so we uh, mm-hmm. we were talking about now that the drive-ins are open about going. Mm-hmm. 
So at Starlight this weekend, they're showing Bloodshot and Fantasy Island. I would li- I would like to see actually uh, see Double Fantasy feature, Island. Get them both. And then at the Holiday mm-hmm. uh, one in Hamilton, mm-hmm. they're showing The Invisible Man and The Hunt. That actually seems like a good lineup. Those two. Um, we've been. My family has been to the Holiday one. Um, they and I follow them on Facebook a lot. They reopened this past weekend, and mm-hmm. uh, they were not, at, even with social distancing, because they still have to leave a spot, they said that uh, they still did not sell out. Everybody thought that everybody was going to rush to it. I think everybody was worried that there were going to be long lines, and they still had plenty of spots open. So go to your drive-ins, people. So, And they said they recommend staying in the car with the, vo- you know, with the thing in, but they said if you get out, you have to be obviously right in front of your car, and uh, you have to have a mask on. So, uh, just to let everybody know, but, um, I, like I said, I saw the lineup this week. I thought it was really well done. Uh, last week was Onward and, uh, shoot, there was another kid's, uh, Jumanji 2, um, yeah. the next level. I, so I should have went last week. I'd be more interested in those two movies than anything that was coming out this week. Damn it. I may just go up to, uh, at 11 o'clock just to watch the hunt. So I don't have to pay $20. I, I'll rather drive and spend six bucks to get in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. we can go up there and we can stop off at Municipal Brew Works and pick up a growler and yeah. put it in a car. <laughs> they do. So, uh, does that mean we have to hang out with Jason? Oh, no, I'll be down. I'll be down in another no, section. No, J- yeah, Jason won't get hang out with us. We, we, we have a chance of being infected with COVID, and we have germs. I'm not going around, Brian. COVID knocked out his door already today. Blake, you missed that. COVID was knocking. It was scary. Oh, man. My dog scared it away, though. Oh, good. Good. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, okay. that's a better one, Jason. What's that? That you get backdrop. Yeah, you like that one? Better than what you've been showing us. This is Star Wars back here now. Um, let's see here. Let's do a top five. Give me a top five, somebody. Top five song. Good job. Anyways, best color man in the business. Top <laughs> Five. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> oh, top five. Okay, so top five. This top week. five. Okay, now all of you just stop it. Uh, top five. Top five. <laughs> I'm going to click this pen. Hey, I specifically brought a non-clickable pen. I almost said it. something about that earlier when I saw you holding the pad. I'm like, oh, that one don't click, does it? Thank God. Uh, top five this week is from Nisi, one of our favorite listeners. Uh, box all, oh, I'm sorry. Top five songs you would add to your own mixtape. Can be any type of mixtape and any type of genre, whatever type title. But back in the day, kids, you would have a tape recorder and you would uh, put songs on it and give it to your friends, girlfriends, boyfriends, and it would be your favorite songs. Hence the mixtape. If you watch Guardians of the Galaxy, you know what it is. So, uh, top five songs you would add to your own mixtape. Blake, do you have a number five? <clears throat> Actually, I have a one through 11. Okay, so do your one through five. <laughs> What's your number sure. five? And then we'll ignore the six so through I'm, 11. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually cheating, and I am cheating with uh, using uh, Blake and Michelle's wedding album. Oh, okay. Okay. So when we got married, uh, one of the table uh, gifts, you know, your, your, your table was marked with a, a CD with your name on it and your table number. So uh, we actually burned uh, lots of fucking CDs, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I have here through 1 through 11. Okay. So, uh, these were songs that we picked um and for our wedding so if you came to our wedding this is uh you got this cd with these 11 songs so I'll, what i'll do is i'll do uh starting with 11 and 10 i'll do nine and eight seven and six five and four three and two and one that's how i'll good. do that back how's that that works yeah just, just, and just then, hope that then, fit. then you can guess whether this was michelle's song or my song okay yeah okay. they were all michelle's songs yeah, ultimately they are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We all know who had veto power. 
All right, so number 11, this is track 11, was uh, All the Way by Celine Dion and Frank Sinatra. Definitely so, a Michelle song. Blake song. Right. Um, Michelle song. When I'm 64. What Beatles. was it? Definitely a Blake song, When I'm 64 by the Beatles. Ugh. Uh, I think I think that was probably a both, actually. Okay. Yeah, I think Beatles is kind of the, an agreed-upon band for them <laughs> yeah but there, there, there's a, there's there's uh stuff on here that i know is specifically me so but yeah so yeah all the way celine dion and frank sinatra that obviously that's too classy for me but you know when i'm 64 the beatles yeah that's, that was kind of like a both of us option i think brian what type of mixtape did you make i made my own mixtape the brian mix yep The Brian mix I, I think he's asking if your number five on the Brian mix is. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I, I was, was waiting. waiting. <laughs> well, you weren't paying attention to me, Jason. So, <laughs> uh, number five for me uh, is stressed <clears throat> out by the Twenty One Pilots. Okay. Is this your COVID mixtape? Because I'm stressed out. Looking, <laughs> looking at it, it could very well be. Yeah. Okay. Looking at the titles and the, knowing the songs, it could be. Jeff, what's your mixtape? Well, what I did was I made five mixtapes, and I picked the one song that I would definitely put on that mixtape. Okay, I like the idea. So, like, uh, number one, first one I have is, like, the Road Trip mixtape. Okay. And the, the, the one song I, I would definitely put on there is uh, Radar Love by Golden Earring. Radar love. Uh, uh, that's a good for the drive. Uh, yeah, that's got a good beat to speed too. Uh, Jim, what's your number five, and what type of mixtape do you have? Uh, my mixtape is, of course, y- you got to give it to the girl you know, and she's probably just going to throw it away. But it's got to <laughs> be like sappy loves, and so I, I, I hobied you no know, enough. Five, because mm-hmm. you have to have Alphaville Forever Young and Cindy Lauper's Time After Back to Back. Time After Back. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, my <laughs> my my number five. Uh, my mixtape. First off, I just did one type of mixtape. Uh, it's because my wife actually said it. Because her comment today at lunch was. I told her what the top five was, and she's like, you have no musical taste except one-hit wonders. You had so many CDs of one-hit wonders, just do a one-hit wonder mixtape. So that's what I did, my favorite one-hit wonders. Uh, let's see here. One-hit wonders are fun. And Bon Jovi. I did not put any Bon Jovi. <laughs> I was going to do a Bon Jovi mixtape, but it was too tough. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my number five is uh, Walking in Memphis. In Memphis. I really like that song uh, by Mark Cohn, I think it is, uh, in 1991. Yeah. So, Walking in Memphis is my number five. If you get lost walking in Memphis, will that song help you find your way? No. (laughs) I don't know how accurate are his descriptions of walking in Memphis. I mean, it's... Uh, ten years ago, when I was uh, lost walking around Memphis looking for a cab, it didn't help me. <laughs> oh. uh, let's see. Were you near Graceland? Because I know he sings about that in the song. He does. Were you ten <laughs> feet off. You ten feet off the pier. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, my number uh, four is. Um, let's see here. Um, just making sure I have it here. Uh, I have. Aha, uh-huh. take on me. Take on me. Take me on. Take me on. The song better known for its video than its actual musical content. Great, it is a great song. Take on me. Well, it wasn't. And, and I love how Jason, Jason always Jason. gets the lyrics wrong. Yeah. Take <laughs> me on. Anyways, uh, Jim, what's your number four? My number four, again, it's Simple Minds, Don't You Forget About Me. In don't, eh, eh, eh. Hey! Don't you. It's a classic. I like that one. Okay. 
Jeff, what's your number four? I mean, if, you're, if your girlfriend's oh, throwing that song away, she's not worth it. <laughs> Good point. Uh, Jeff, what's uh, your number my, four? My number four is from the Love Mixtape, and uh, it's uh, John Legend's All of Me. Oh, that's a good one. Nice job, Jeff. I really like that song. If I was making a love mix, I would definitely put John Legend on it. So that's not that's that's not the same as the uh, Steve Martin movie. All no, of no, no, <laughs> not, not Steve Martin, Lily Tomlin. No, no, not that. Would I like not, that version better, or would I like John Legend's better? You probably would like the Steve Martin version better. <laughs> Correct. All of me. Why not take all of me? That's what she said. <laughs> all your curves and edges, all your perfect imperfections. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the, yeah, the John Legend one, yes. Yeah. The perfect imperfections. I like it. Uh, Blake, or I'm sorry, uh, Brian, what's your number four? Number four is Elderly Woman Behind the Counter in a Small Town by Pearl Jam. Sense a theme with your songs, with your bands. Sense a theme. Twenty One Pilots and Pearl Jam. Yeah. What's the theme? Uh, that White, type guys. Of... <laughs> <laughs> White guys. White guys at rock. Forget it. Jeff nailed it. No, go ahead. I, I'm, no, I'm forget very it. Curious. No, I'm not mocking it. I'm just saying the same type of music. I know. That, so you know what? You mean the type of music it. he likes? He put on his theme, his mixtape. No. You know what, Brian? <laughs> You're not getting a spanking tonight. Forget it. No spankings for you. Jackpot. Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, Blake, what's your number? Although, for I will say, uh, when the COVID came to the door, uh, <laughs> Dr. Dana overheard us, and I did get my spanking. <laughs> so he did get a spanking tonight. <laughs> we'll have to have a talk with Dr. Dana. But, but did she say good game? She did not. <laughs> you have to have a talk with Dr. Well, Dr. See, when it's your spouse, you don't have to say good game, though. Yeah. You're my man meat, not her. You're, you're not hers. Uh, anyway. Don't ever say that ever again. <laughs> Blake, what's your number four? <laughs> uh, number four. I'm going to do – I'm going to group three together here so I can squeeze all 11 songs in here in my top five. How's that? Okay. That uh, works. No, number nine on this list was Green Eyes from Coldplay. Michelle's song? That's Michelle. Correct. I don't know if you as a Coldplay fan. Correct. I don't know that any is correct. Coldplay here, fans. And here's the funny thing about it. Neither of us have Green Eyes. Yeah, I don't even know that particular song from Coldplay, so I couldn't even it's tell good. you how that goes. Uh, number eight, Woman, John Lennon. That's a Blake song. Correct. Uh, number seven was Something by the Beatles. Both? Yeah. More me in that one. <laughs> More you on that. Okay. Yeah, that was a 50 50. Well, yeah, pretty much any Blake songs are 50 50 because she didn't veto them. <laughs> <laughs> All. Fifty-one forty-nine. Okay. <laughs> uh, was that your number seven? Yes. Okay. So we now we're back to Blake for his number three. Or, oh, yeah, yeah six, number three. Five. Let me do six five, five four. Yep. Uh, six fade into you, Mazzy Star. Okay. Michelle. Nope, that was me. Oh, that was you. Okay. Joby Joba, Gypsy Kings. You. Michelle. Uh, that was 50 50. Mm-hmm. Joe B. Joe Bach. Got a dieta. Get All right. Uh, number four. I'm going to be the proclaimer. 500 miles. I almost put that on my travel uh, list. Trail, yeah, for my road mix list. Yeah, that would have been good. <laughs> um, Blake. Blake likes I'm going to be 500 miles. Yeah, that's, that's that's more. Yeah, I, I that, that was more of me. Yes, that's correct. Oh, you, you lied. There are more Blake songs on there than Michelle songs. Well, they're really all hers, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Blake didn't have a disdain for it that uh, he wasn't going to call off the wedding if it was on there. So that makes it a Blake song. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, bl- right. uh, sorry. Back intern. To yeah, intern. What's your number three? 
The Best of You by the Foo Fighters. Good song. Uh, oh, are you going to get the one edit I heard on the radio that one time where they just sing the best, the best, the best for like four minutes? <laughs> not that version. Oh, <laughs> that's not the best version. I was you know, I was driving to work one day and like it started out normal and then once I got into that that's all it was for the next three minutes was just singing the best over and over and over again. So the DJ was in the bathroom. <laughs> I think I did it on purpose. Ah. Uh, Jeff, what's your number three? Uh, we're on my number three. Uh, this is my sad mixtape mm-hmm. tier. It's going to be. Uh, Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. Uh, but it's a sad mix. Uh, I like R.E.M. I don't like that one. But that's really? A, that's the that's an, you know, and song. That is a long, hurting song, too. Yeah. It starts, and it hurts, and it just doesn't stop. Sometimes. But when you want to listen to sad songs, you that's what you want. And yeah. it's on my mixtape, so there's going to be like... 11 more songs after that that ten are the of them, same way. 10 of them, The Cure. <laughs> songs by The Cure. No, The Cure wouldn't make my list. Uh, Jim, what's your number three? The, oh, he has the. Well, his breakup thing is all Adele <laughs> <laughs> and Taylor yeah. Swift. No, oh, probably. and I was going to say, uh, what's the guy's name? The British guy who just had the album out this year. He's hitting all the charts now. Clay um, Aiken. British yeah, he's guy. British. He's definitely British. Michael Bublé? Sam Smith? No. I can find Michael it real Cole. quick. Daniel Powder. Philip uh, Phillips? No. James Blunt? Nope. <laughs> Ed Keep guessing. Elton John? Not Ed Sheeran. Elton John. That's a good one. <laughs> Adele? Uh, Baron? Um, Oasis? British guy who... Okay, I'm going to go my number Billy three. Billy Eilish? <laughs> British guy. Billy. Billy Eilish. Yes. <laughs> or Billy Eilish's brother. <laughs> Jim, what's your number three? My number three um, is uh, the Airborne Toxic Event, but I'm going to go with a cover they did of the Magnetic Field song, Book of Love. How does that go, Jim? Uh, that, Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel um, do you, have, have you seen the Scrubs, the last episode, or the last of the uh, last season eight yeah. episode? Yes, when, when he's walking down the hallway and they have the song in the background, it's that song. That's the uh, Peter Gabriel version. But the Airborne Toxic Event does. It's a, the Book of Love is long and boring, and it. But uh, yeah, look it up and listen to it. Okay. <laughs> the guy, not the British the, guy, uh, I was talking about is is Louis Capaldi. Oh, Doctor Who's nephew. Yes. That's not the airborne toxic song. I I thought you were going to pick Jim. Which one? Some somewhere on midnight. Yep. Is that the guy that. Uh, wrote well, the book? that that's more on the breakup song, not on the love song. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, my number three is uh, I Hobied It. It's from 1982, both of them. Uh, Come On Eileen by Dexie's Midnight Runners. Come on, Eileen. I'd, I'd rather not. She doesn't deserve <laughs> it. Why do you got to ruin the year I was born, man? Sorry. <laughs> and the other one from 1982. My, my, wife, my wife hates that song. I, lo- I like it. And I said, why do you hate the song? Because you hate the, the, in, you know, the double entendre innuendo? And she goes, no. Because if you actually listen to it, he's actually pressure, pressuring the girl into having sex. That's what she said. Thanks, Blake, for ruining my top three. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the song's about. Anyways, yeah. I, I didn't want to get... I just took it the shitty song. <laughs> I'm just doing catchy songs, okay, people? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very Jason's rapey song list. <laughs> He's Number not th- raping her. He's just trying to convince her. Come on. <laughs> Come on. My hobby for the number. Come on. Come on. Come on. I will Come put, on. I will put Joe Exotic back up on my banner again. Don't tempt me. Come on. 
Uh, my number three, uh, I t- hobied it with 1982's Tony B- uh, Basil's Mickey. Hey, Mickey, you're so uh, fine. You're so fine. You blew my mind. Hey, Mickey. Hey, Mickey. 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 That is one of the most Mickey, annoying so fucking songs ever. Uh, 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 Blake, well, I'm, not, I'm not done singing. Hey, Mickey, no, you're so fine. You're so fine. You blew my mind. Hey, Mickey. Well, that's what you do, Jason. Don't play that at a wedding and have a pyramid where the bride's on top. Moving because on. Because people will will find it offensive and ruining the wedding, and they will leave. Hey, Mickey, you're so funny. <laughs> Anyways. No. Uh, let's see. Actually, that's interesting that you hobie them together, Jason, because you have uh, one song, you know, where the guy's trying to talk the girl into having sex, and the other is uh, a video of pervy cheerleaders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they also feel good songs. <laughs> I'll just put the videos together. We can get the, the, the guys in the overalls, but no shirts, hanging out with the cheerleaders. <laughs> ZZ Top. Uh, and then my number two is 1979's Video Killed the Radio Star. Video Killed the Radio Star. Video Who sings it? The, uh, the Boogles? <laughs> Ryan <laughs> Drink. <laughs> I mean, it was close. <laughs> I knew it as the soon what? as I said it was wrong. <laughs> the what? <laughs> you mean the buggles? <laughs> yes, uh, yes, the Wiggles the... sang it. The Wiggles. <laughs> Jim, what's your number two? <laughs> okay, my number two, it's not a love song mix if you don't have somebody standing outside the window playing this song on their boombox, Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes. In your eyes. Iconic, iconic scene in film. The light, the heat. Your eyes. From Breakfast Club or Easy A. Uh, I'll I'll go with neither. (laughs) Uh, Easy, uh, what song did he play at Easy A was... uh, was a song from Breakfast Club. That was Simple Minds. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Was... Uh, Jeff, what's your or, yeah, Jeff, what's your number two? Uh, oh yeah, Jim just went. Uh, my number two is uh, my uh, psych up mix. You know, anytime you just yeah, let's get pumped. Uh, it's going to be uh, we're not going to take it by Twisted Sister. Hey. Not gonna take it. We're I thought you'd have killing the name of right there, Jeff. No, nah, that doesn't psych me up. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Brian, what's your number two? Uh, my number two is Bullet the Blue Sky. You too. Wow. That's my slide guitar noise. Is that, yeah. is that when Bono was a douchebag or <laughs> when he was a douchebag? <laughs> It was when he was transitioning from douchebag to douchebag. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But but he but he still wrote and made great music. Yes, he did. I, I'm not doubting that. <laughs> uh, Je- or Blake, what's your number three and two and one? Um, three and two, I'll do together because actually they're they're a pair. It's a love song in Love Cats by The Cure. I don't know that second one, but I'll guess they're all Blake songs because no one loves the cure that I know more than Blake. Uh, well, actually, Blake. That's, that's a love song would have been more uh, Michelle. Love Cats was me because that's a, uh, a song that I had picked on an original mix CD tape that I gave to her. Ha-ha. Ah, so you really made a mixtape with that song on it. Yeah, that's true. And I love the stand up bass in it, too. It was uh, awesome. But- that's Stray Cats. You, you keep getting them confused. <laughs> no. I know what I'm talking about. Shut up, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Blake, what's your number two? All right, well, th- those are, that was three and two. Okay, so what's the, the last song on the list, which was number one on the list, number one on the playlist, was uh, Harry Connick's Jr. It Had to Be You. Okay. It had to be you. That's the typical wedding thing. Yeah. So I think it. Marla Hooch sings it better. <laughs> <laughs> what a hitter. <laughs> uh, Brian, what's your number two? Or number one, I'm sorry. 
Number one is uh, the song is Universal Sound by Tyler Childers. I do not know that song or that artist. He's a fairly new uh, country artist. That would explain it. Not not country like B105 country. Like not legitimately. The country. <laughs> not, not like B105 country. More like how country. Ethiopia is a country. Oh, wait. No. Oh. <laughs> uh, Jeff, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is my nostalgia mix, mm-hmm. and it's uh, the Rolling Stones painted black. Ah. Okay. Uh, Jim, what's your number one? My number one, again, this this goes, it's kind of nostalgic for me because uh, if you ever heard this uh, song coming from my room in college, you just stayed away. <laughs> <laughs> It will be Sting, Fields of Gold. <laughs> I like that song. I think you might have just now ruined it for me. But <laughs> tastes, tastes like. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, number one for me on One Hit Wonders mixtape. Yeah, you don't get to move people along. <laughs> no, no, we do. <laughs> you're you're in no position to move us along. For that, we do. <laughs> uh, is Tommy Two Tone, 1981's 867. Five three zero nine. I got it. I got it. Eight six seven five three zero nine. Okay. What did you get? I don't want to be too. You got Jenny. <laughs> don't want to be too critical of people's lists, but even as a one hit wonder, uh, they say <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm going to do. Gonna fine. Say, you know what? I'm taking I'm it out. I'll be the whole hey. tape. <laughs> If Jason makes a mixtape, I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> Fine, Jeff. I'm changing it. Was not was. Walk the dinosaur. Every. Uh, I would expect that from you more than. Thank the, you. I mean, I mean, I you have no Kajagoogoo <laughs> on your one hit wonder tape. What's that? Change it to the things, Jason. Wait, wait, wait. What? what was that, Jeff? What was yours? I said change you have no- no, oh, change Jeff for Jeff. Change it to the Ting Tings. His favorite song. No, never change it to the Ting Tings. No, I said uh, Kaja Goo Goo. Ugh. That's too shy. I like that. Hush, hush. Hush, hush. I like that. That was a good one, man. So Nisi, who came up with this top five, thank you, had she did a one-hit wonders mixtape as well. Uh, she had Spirit so in the Sky. I like this from. better. <laughs> she had Spirit in the Sky, Norman Greenbaum. Uh, My Sharona by The Knack. My Sharona. Uh, Rapper's Delight by The Sugar Hill Gang. Oh, God. The Sugar Hill Gang. That's old. I'll, I'll take Rapping Granny's version. Uh, uh, I Melt With You, Modern English. You know what? That's a very damn good one, too. I forgot about them. That was uh, a, that was a damn good uh, shoegazer song, dance song. Uh, Closing Time by Semisonic. Closing Time. I hated that song. Uh, Afternoon Delight. She said, don't judge me. Played that. I'm kind of judging the Afternoon Delight. Sorry, DC. (laughs) Uh, Listener MVP, Brian Auer, had, he had a road trip mixtape. He had had Take Me Home Country Roads by John Denver. Uh, This is a good one. Uh, Life is a Highway by Rascal Flatts. So, Oh, God. At least do the Tom Cochran version. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The Great Adventure uh, by Stephen Curtis Chapman. Uh, Here I Go Again by Whitesnake. Oh, my God. He really (laughs) did. (laughs) Okay, I did not know this because I I haven't looked at these top fives. We were Walking in Memphis by Marcone. (laughs) So there you go. Good job, Brian. Well done. Well done. So uh, there... Uh, there is your top five for this week. Thank you, Nisi. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we did have just got a report, and Steve from EILFM said he appreciates the invite, but he was doing another podcast. <laughs> so he came to, to, to do his podcast, and we hijacked it, huh? How dare he? <laughs> How dare he? he? He's cheating on us. <laughs> With his own... <laughs> <laughs> with his own podcast. <laughs> Did you tell him we were just answering his question for him? Yes. 
Uh, so yeah, yeah they're uh, bad idea of the week this week. Uh, petting an alligator when it's coming up to you. Uh, bad uh, that's, idea. That's like number three. No, 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 no. I would say, I wouldn't say top ten. Because really? that's, that's a like, really bad idea. Alligator petting like is a deep. bad idea. Okay, fine, Jeff. Three. You talk to me. God, that dumb bitch. <laughs> Uh, Dog, bitch. Uh, we have titles. Well, at least the, she doesn't. <laughs> at least she won't live Gate to regret it. Uh, uh, we were having uh, titles for the show. I have COVID at the door. Uh, the rules. I had ru- COVID at the door. Uh, the rules of rules. Uh, I, I rules I, of the rules. <laughs> uh, I win all the time. Uh, is there any conflict? And uh, no spankings for you. So I had no spanking for you. I had I hate you. <laughs> I had I had dumb bitch. <laughs> I had disappear into his pants. Uh, uh, different definitions of fun and movie about hemorrhoids. <laughs> Uh, I had keep your hands to yourself. Um, who is in my mouth? Uh, this dumb bitch. Uh, don't spank me. Um, go cucumber yourself. And throw away this mixtape. I had... The Boogles uh, spanking the intern, or do you want to spank me? And there are no losers in Drink the Beer. (laughs) So I sense a theme of spankings. Or throw away. I like different different definitions of fun. Uh, (laughs) Throw away the mixtape works, too. I like throw away the mixtape. I like throw away the mixtape. Okay, change approved. It's actually kind of about the, <laughs> the about what we talked about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, back in the early days, like I'm talking single digit numbers, uh, or even double digit numbers of the episode of the podcast. You know, if you mentioned uh, a deity in your title, you would get a lot of downloads from the Christian group. Uh, they didn't stay with you the next episode, but they did no. download a lot. <laughs> Just a little tip for you future podcasters out there. <laughs> Just uh, so, so that we should. The one I had was actually God. I hate you. <laughs> that would have worked. <laughs> I don't know if that would have worked. <laughs> so, anyways, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Listen to a hobby.